no. According to the FBI, 84% of white victims are killed by white offenders. Did you know, according to the FBI, in 2019, over 69% of all offenses were committed by white offenders. Did you know, the most violent state in the country is Alaska, which is over 66% Caucasian. 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 You're listening to White on White Crime on The Clay Kane Show. Hmm. Those stats are real, too. June 9th, Madison Square Garden. There's a hockey game. And you know what happens with hockey. That, that anger, that rage gets all built up. It's just anger. I blame hockey for the white-on-white crime ap- epidemic in the country. I really do. Hockey is definitely to blame. And I'm sure a lot of them got single mothers. Fatherlessness. It's a lot. Now, I never watch hockey, but I know of the violence. I know of it. I've seen it. They, they, they look like uh, Jason from Friday the 3rd. A bunch of Jason Voorhees running around just, just smacking each other on the ice, right? So a New York Rangers fan assaulted a Tampa Bay Lightning fan during the Rangers playoff. Sucker punched him right in the face. Just Caucasian savagery. Sucker punched him in the face because there was some kind of verbal dispute. The violence, the evil. His name is James Anastasio, 29 years old in New York, adding to the crime in New York. He's been charged with two counts of assault, two counts of disorderly conduct, and two counts of harassment. The man he sucker punched hit the floor and was reportedly knocked unconscious. People came to his aid and and, and a man who saw the incident tried to intervene. And this savage, this hockey thug, punched, the, uh, punched that man in the face as well, who was trying to be a good Samaritan at Madison Square Garden. Now, I want you to hear a little bit of this unhinged savagery. I just want you to hear the punch and the screams. We'll play a bit of it. Listen to this. <laughs> You don't know what's so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. Oh no. oh, no. Take it down. Madison Square Garden had to release a statement. They called the incident an abhorrent assault, and James Anastasio has been banned from MSG for life for life. James's daddy spoke out to the New York Post. Spoke out. He said his son, quote, made a choice and sometimes choices in our lives have consequences. He said, there's nothing to defend. It is what it is. Is it really? We'll wait for him to come home. We'll pick him up and everything's okay. Tomorrow's a new day, unquote. But what did you... What value did you teach your child to make him assault somebody in Madison Square Garden over hockey? Was he a was he an Eminem fan? I just want to know. Assault. I want to know. Two people. One guy and then the person who tried to intervene. Um, it's interesting to me that when these types of chaos and mayhem events happen, yes, people are unhinged at games, but to the point where you're laying your hands on somebody. The risk of that, the idiocracy, um, there's no game that's serious enough to punch somebody. I'm sorry. So I, I think that there is something to be said about that. Um, but also looking at the fact that if this had been two Black teens or two Black adults, it would have been a front page news story. People would have acted a clown. All of a sudden, these mm-hmm. are like, you know, these roguish folks. Uh, new York Post would have ran it because for some reason they try to find the most savage Black stories they could possibly find um, and place them on the front page for you know, to rehash on Twitter for at least three, four weeks, same story. Um, but neither his nor tails on this one. I wonder why. Yeah, 
Yeah. And they would call it black on black crime. And why is this black person assaulting this black person? You know, they always racialize us, whether it's whether it's crime, health care, how we vote. It's always racialized. Us. But this is this is this, this, this is some savagery. Do you remember? Because white folks will, 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 will hurt somebody over some sports. Do you remember when there was a riot? When the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl, oh, yeah. and there were lit trucks and things damage. on fire, they had yeah, cool. millions and millions of dollars of damage, property damage that taxpayers got to pay for. Now, I want to know the, the 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 police resources that had to go into booking this this savage, this hockey savage, who assaulted somebody. And if he's still in jail, you know, when folks are in jail, we're paying for them to be in jail. My tax dollars are going to this savage from Staten Island, you know, feeding him and the whole bit. I'm very disturbed. And the guy who was knocked unconscious, he just kind of woke up and just decided to not not, not get hospital treatment. You should have milked that for all his work. <laughs> Would have gotten all the catch that was this. Catch this. He bolted from the scene. Of course he, he bolted did. From the, he bolted. So you assaulted somebody. You assaulted two people. And you know he was peacefully arrested. He Peace. was in the right mind. He was in the right, right mind frame to understand that there were precautions to punching random people. Um, so he was ready to get out. And yeah, peacefully arrested, even though he committed a violent act. That can, it doesn't happen for non-white people. It just doesn't. Amisha, do you think it was a mental health issue on why he Absolutely knocked out not. two people? <laughs> I think it was a, I think it was looking at a scoreboard and saying, bloop, bloop. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, that's a crazy place to go just because a game's not necessarily going in your favor, but no. No, yeah, it's... I don't think that half of the violence that um, white people blame on mental illness has anything to do with a mental illness or a mental health episode at all. It's just them not wanting to take responsibility for lack of self-control and for violent nature that has existed across um, Caucasian communities for quite some time now. Caucasian communities. Why don't I cry? I cover it every day. I have so many to cover. I think I'm going to have my, my third book be on, just called White on White Crime. I, the, the, the Caucasian communities. And Staten Island is predominantly Caucasian. It's predominantly, if I have that right, I'm just saying. It's very scary to me. I don't even know if I feel safe to go back to Madison Square Garden. How is, MS, how is Madison Square Garden going to protect me? I don't know if I feel safe. I don't know if I, if I can walk past the, the, the theater, the auditorium, Madison Square Garden. What's going to happen? I'm nervous. I'm stressed out. You might I'm, catch I mean, a, oh, a white right. What's Eric Adams going to do about this? Say it again. Might catch a white right hook. Nobody knows. Right. Right. So I don't know why uh, this thug, this hockey thug reacted this way. I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know if it was parenting. I don't know if it was welfare because, you know, the majority of people on, on welfare who receive social assistance happen to be white. I don't know if it was the music. Uh, you know, maybe he is a uh, insane, class, insane clown posse fan. I don't know. All I know is I see a lot of violence in this music. It's very violent, very over-sexualized. I, I just, I don't know, I'm concerned. I think Jack Harlow should do a press conference. I just, it's, it's, it's terrifying to me and I'm stressed out. I just want us to be aware. I just want us to be aware and Maybe they can pass some kind of bill, legislation, something. 29 years old. 29 old years old. Punch, <laughs> punch somebody in the face and then punch the other person. What kind of... And the other thing is, I mean, it's just like the reaction. Was the guy alone? If I saw one of my friends get punched in the face, I'm going to take the other cat down. It's just so unfortunate. That's savagery. So he was at this hockey game, Amisha, just getting worked up, worked up. As the, did, did the Rangers lose, as the Rangers lost the playoff, just getting worked up, just that the, the Caucasian Jim Crow blood just kind of boiling inside, and then, bam, assaulted anybody. Thank God it wasn't a black, a black uh, hockey fan. 
Oh, Lord. Thank God it wasn't a, a Mexican uh, supporter of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, my God. Just the blood just pulled his anger, anger, anger. He, he needs to forever be watching hockey at his house. It really? And, and hopefully does not have a partner because domestic violence is also extremely high amongst this group of individuals. Lord have mercy. It just stresses me out. I've never been to a hockey game at all. Are there any black hockey players? <sighs> they are, but they're few and far between. I've been to a handful of hockey games. It's not my sport. Like it's not the majority of African Americans like sport of choice. But yeah, people are loud and rowdy, and you know, just seeing people skate on ice and smack each other with sticks just ain't my jam. But I have been at least three or four times. Is it cold in a hockey uh, a hockey? Place, no, you, you know, you know, you know, um, I went in undergrad because I went to college in Nashville. Nashville has a hockey stadium. It's not cold. Oh, oh, OK. I just see the ice. I don't know if it's cold, if they got to keep it cold. I don't know what's going on. But um, yeah, I wanted to make sure you all knew about this. So to the 29 year old James, whatever, brother, I hope you get some counseling. I hope uh, you are researched for your violence and clearly, clearly. Uh, hockey is not the space for you, not the space for you. And yeah, just be aware, just be aware. This white on white crime is an epidemic. And again, I want Mayor Eric Adams to do something. I want Chuck Schumer to do something. Uh, Kristen Gillibrand, uh, do something. It's, it's all over. And don't get me started on white on white crime in New York when it comes to the mafia. I, no one ever calls that white on white crime. You had Italians and the mafia killing each other, plain sight, like bloody bodies, just killing each other. That whole, the, the, those RICO uh, laws they have now that they're, they're getting wrapped Organized crime was designed Italian. to fight back against yeah. that group. They've made movies. They've praised it. Goodfellas and Casino and, and The Godfather. It's praised. It's, it's a nice old gangster film. The mass, I mean, in plain sight, murdering people. But no one calls that white on white crime. I don't understand. This, what's the, isn't that white on white crime? Isn't it? Or is it not? No one calls it Italian on Italian crime. No one ever even says like Latin on Latin crime. Uh, Puerto Rican on Puerto Rican crime. Uh, no one even says that. No one even says Chinese on Chinese crime. No one ever. It's it's why is it just us? Because it's an easy sale. Intra, intra community violence is intra community violence. Most people who commit right. violent acts commit them in the communities that they live in. Because black people, because white people, because Latino people, because most people live in communities of individuals who look like them. Any crime that's committed in that community is probably by somebody who looks like you. <laughs> that does not make it higher. Uh -huh. That doesn't make it more aggressive. It just means that the likelihood of Black people living in Black communities um, getting any type of criminal activity from another Black person is really high. It is the exact same as white people in white communities who are, you know, who experience violence or who experience crime. Not all crime is violent, or who experience crime in their communities. It's typically done by a white person. This isn't rocket science. It's proximity uh -huh. proximity crime. <laughs> Most people aren't traveling across town to commit crimes. Right, right. And to your point, you know, this country is still very segregated. Most white folks live in white neighborhoods. Most black folks live in black neighborhoods. And when you go to a hockey game, I mean, well, I haven't been, but it's from what I know. <laughs> right. The only place that probably has more white people is NASCAR, which I do enjoy NASCAR, but I guarantee you I'm one of like three people of color. Well, I... um. I just, like I said, I, I just think this is important to point out. I am not going to forget the epidemic of white on white crime. And if, next time I have a politician on, I think I'm just going to ask him a question about it. What are we going to do about white on white crime? I wish I could have Herschel Walker and ask him that. Because a white on white crime in Georgia is out of this world. It really is. Georgia is predominantly white. I want to know. The, you know, the most violent state in the country is Alaska. One of the most violent states in the country. It is Alaska. I, I want to know. I want to know what are you going to do about white I just want to know what are they doing in Alaska? Are they fighting wildlife? Like, what is happening in Alaska? <laughs> I, can, I will have to do some research into this. What, what is it? It's the crime. It's, it's, that's, the, that's the crime rate. But, you know, nobody wants to talk about that. But I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. All right. Close this out. Why don't white crime? <laughs> Hmm. 
that's exactly how I feel. I'm just running down the street. I got to walk past Madison Square Garden uh, later on this week. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray to Black Jesus. Get me through. <laughs> I hope I can make it past this block. Oh, Lord, please help me. Because I'm terrified. 